Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samet, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. In this video tutorial, I'll be showing you my top 5 tips for mastering the pen tool, by far the sharpest and most precise way to cut out or composite stuff in Photoshop. If you're serious about your photo manipulation work, getting to grips with the pen tool will improve your artwork instantly. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialise in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos Monday to Friday. It's free, easy and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video, enjoy! Okay, so at this stage you may be thinking, why even use the pen tool? It's difficult and weird and hard to use. And I'm just going to explain right now that without the pen tool, you would not be able to create sharp or precise compositing like this. The magic wand tool, the magnetic lasso tool, the color selection tools, absolutely none of them can compare with the pen tool for cutting out sharp objects in Photoshop. So Photoshop is raster, bitmap based software, and the pen tool itself uses mathematical algorithms like a Bezier system to create really sharp selections. Now, before we crack into the five tips, I'm just going to show you the pen tool in action. Here are some figures from the Neo Stock Stock Photography Library. If you need really interesting figurative photo stocks for your photo manipulation work be sure to check us out link in the description and here i'm just going to zoom right in now the precision and the cleanliness of what can be achieved with the photoshop pen tool so if you're looking toward creating broadcast quality commercial work then it's absolutely essential that you learn a pen tool right away before we get into the tips just a few more here's a commercial job that I did for a data server company one more there and here we have some acts of creative masochism and for the YouTube videos I've done a couple of these just for fun just to take the Photoshop pen tool as far as it could go and uh, this one nearly broke me so I'm gonna get rid of that right now okay so I'm gonna go through the process of using the pen tool and I'm gonna throw in some tips as we go so number one tip for using a pen tool is use shortcuts wherever possible. This is especially important if you're looking toward creating a career in digital art, becoming a freelance photo manipulator. When you use shortcuts, your time is reduced dramatically. And when you're producing commercial work, time is money. So I'm just gonna show you some of the main shortcuts to use here. Command and plus will zoom you in. Command and minus will zoom you out. And if you're on a PC, just replace command with control. I'm using a Mac today. So I'm going to command and plus to zoom in. And then another important shortcut to know is use a space key to press down space. And then with the mouse, you can pan around as you need. Command and plus again. And then using the space bar just to glide around the image, I'm going to get rid of that dialog box right now. So we've got the full screen. These are the primary shortcuts that you'll need for doing your pen tool work. Now for tip number two, I would advise you to learn the pen tool controls. So once more, I use the shortcut there to activate the pen tool. I hit P on the keyboard and that's given me access to that tool right away. So the pen tool is a bit of a strange beast. It has its own way about it. It has its own physics. And just like riding a bike, it's going to take a couple of goes before you get your head around it. Now, a lot of people, they have a couple of goes on a pen tool and they think, no, this is weird. I don't like it. But honestly, give it a couple of goes and then overnight something will click and then the whole system will make sense to you. As I said before, the pen tool is based on algorithms. It uses a Bezier system. So these small square things here, these are called anchor points and you set the anchor points where you want the path to go. The main pen tool controls to learn is just clicking. So if you wanted a straight line, you could just click. We'll go into further detail on that in a minute, but you can just click an anchor point and that will 
extend the path within the object or alternatively you can click and hold and drag so when I click hold and drag you can see the curves going wherever I'm dragging the the mouse so I'm holding down the left mouse button and I'm clicking and dragging so the curvature conforms to the curvature of the object that I'd like to composite after that anchor point has been laid down this is a very common mistake but some people will try and, and wrangle and fight their way through so when I go like that because the curvature is set from that last anchor point it will want to continue going round in an arc like this and that's problematic especially if you're cutting out an object that goes in different directions or you don't want the curvature anymore one of the most important pen tool controls to learn is when you hold down alt and go to an anchor point when you click that will turn off the curvature for the next point so it basically resets the path to zero the curvature is maintained for this bit and then when I want to continue it doesn't naturally want to bend round in this direction and I know this sounds wacky at this point but just bear with me guys you'll get the fundamentals the next pen tool control to learn is holding down the command key that would be control on a windows and then you can grab and move any of these anchor points to wherever you need them also you can hold down control go back and tweak any of the points or any of these handles if you see a mistake or if you want to amend anything you can go back and tweak that as necessary so i'm just going to demonstrate those main path controls as i go around this cup a bit so what we're doing right now is we're cutting out this cup using the incredibly precise pencil so i'm click drag and holding i'm holding down command to get that in position i'm holding down command and tweaking the handle that's good now if i would go here it would go a bit wacky so what i like to do is hold down alt turn off the curvature and then go here click drag and hold it resets the path curvature and lets me continue there hold down alt click that and then i can start again now this may look long this may look laborious but there's no better way of doing it for tip number three it's always advisable to create your path one to two pixels within the objects that you're cutting out now the reason for this is that you can often get the fringing of the background in this case white that comes through when you select and copy and paste or, or mask the object itself if you're one pixel within the object you can eliminate that fringing and you don't really lose any important data uh, cleaning up fringing after you've created a pencil is just extra time and if you're a freelancer and you're on the clock then every minute counts for tip four use straight paths where necessary so here we're on a straight segment of this cup now to create a straight path we covered this before just one click and it's done but there's another little hack that you can use you can hold down shift and click and that will be 100 percent perpendicular uh, and 90 degree and you can also go horizontal so even if my pen tool is a bit above there and I held down shift when I clicked it that would be 100% horizontal perpendicular so that can be handy in some instances where you've got to be 100% accurate so we're just going to continue around the cup now using all the techniques for the straight paths I'm literally just clicking downwards and ensuring the path itself is within one to two pixels inside so it doesn't create any fringing we'll have a look to see how good a job I did at the end of this and at the bottom of the cup here we've got a bit of curvature so it's click drag and pull use alt turn off curvature move with the space bar click drag and pull I'm going to hold down alt turn off the curvature there use the space bar to pan around and the same drill all along here space bar pan click drag and pull you'll see that I use the um, the alt to turn off curvature quite a lot it's a big part of the workflow 
I have seen other people not use alt and click and it does make me twitch. So I hope you guys don't do the same. Okay, let's just see where we're at. What I'm going to do is I'm going to time lapse magic the rest of this because I think you get the idea at this point and then we'll knock out the whites in the handle. So let's bounce into that. Okay, so we got to the end of the path here. Uh, what we need to do to create a selections composite this cup is go to the very first anchor point and then the icon for the pen tool changes to a small circle when i click on that that will create a closed path now the shortcut i'm going to use is command and zero to fit the screen and here you can see the path around the outside of the cup and we shall see how good a job i have done in ensuring that there's no fringing so I'm just going to step backwards and just go through that process again and show you that. I right click on the path and I go make selection. And this is what we're going to be using for today's tutorial, which is about compositing. I'll show you other uses for the pen tool in other videos for filling the paths, uh, creating shapes, stroking paths, all of that good stuff. But for today, it's just compositing. So we're going to go make selection, feather radius, we're going to go zero. That makes it sharp. If you go to a one, two, three, or four and onwards, that will create a feathered selection. There are uses for that, but today we're cutting out a solid object and I would like it to be super sharp. So just go OK and then use the shortcut Command and J. That will copy the selection and put it on a layer above. I'm going to hide the background and we're looking quite good because the light is catching there that's not fringing what i'm looking at is this area here and there isn't uh, a, a white halo outline so for a demo not a bad job i'm quite happy with that okay so what we're left with here is uh, the hole in the cup handle and as we cut this out i'm going to give you tip number five and that is take your time when you're starting out with a pen tool, don't aim for speed, aim for precision. I know, I know, I know, it's not the fastest way to cut things out. It's not the easiest way to cut things out. But it can't be argued, this is the fastest, precisest, and cleanest way to cut things out in raster bitmap software. It cannot be beaten. So it depends what you're going for, really. There are some artists that are absolutely fantastic that never touch the pen tool and their work is really good but for nine out of ten cases the pen tool will be incredibly helpful for whatever photoshop or compositing photo manipulation project that you're working on so again the principles that we covered click drag and hold we're a couple of pixels inside now i know there's a smart guy going oh he could have just magic wanded that Yes, I could, but I know the results wouldn't be good as the human eye and the Photoshop pencil combined. For the here and now, before AI kicks in, they are unbeatable. So let's go around and finish this off. I could have done that in two seconds with Magic Wand Tool. Yes, you could. Here we go. Up and around. All the techniques that we've covered in the video are in play right now. So I'm just going to hammer this out nice and fast so you're not watching me using the pencil all day long. Holding down command, grabbing the handles and tweaking it around. So this one's a little bit rougher because we're finishing it off. The physics are weird. When you start off, it does feel a bit strange. It's not doing what you want it to do. The paths and the handles are flying off in weird angles but if you use the alt key to turn off the curvature for each point then you won't have the wacky issues that intimidate the majority of new pencil users it will take a couple of goes it may take a day it may take two days but once you have this skill you have this skill for life and then you can start incorporating it into your work and improving the caliber of your artwork and achieve what I like to call broadcast quality work. The type of work that you can sell professionally or offer as a graphic design, as a digital art service to clients in the industry. So 
Commandant, zero to fit the screen, right click on path, make selection, go OK, hit delete, and that's gone. Now, if you want it to be non-destructive, I'll just go back there, go back, go back. If I had a layer mask on that and I wanted to always have the option to tweak that at any point, I could just go onto the path, fill path, on with the layer mask active, go to black, go OK, right click, delete path, and you can come back and edit that layer mask at any point. It's actually the better way of working it. Um, layer masks but there you go they are my top five tips for mastering the pen tool my absolute favorite tool in the photoshop workspace i hope you got some good tips on that guys and that you'll be using in your workflow moving forward if you're not already that will do it for this one i hope to catch you at the next video see you then